Hey there, Dan Gustu here. Today's video is about installing the new dry exhaust and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. I know you guys are all a bit bored at home in self-isolation, so I figured I'd put this video out a bit early. Yesterday I picked up the bits for the exhaust and today just got them in. Didn't quite go to plan, but I think it'll get us going for now. We can always tweak it as time goes by. Anyway, we'll start by looking at the 90 degree bend, which was kind of the critical part of the whole thing. This is the 90 degree bend that, let me give you the context. You can see the exhaust comes out here and it needs to come here. There is not very much distance at all from the end here to here. That's my real worry. If we can't make that tight turn, we're gonna have to do something pretty radical, unfortunately. Probably removing this bit of pipe that comes out of the manifold and refabricating that to be different. I may be able to cut 20 mil off the end here, because it could literally be, you know, 20 mil here and there will get us across the line. To start with though, what I'm gonna do, is I'm just having a look. I need to find a point to cut this pipe where I've got just enough straight for our join. So we have to join, have a minimal amount of flex join in between. And don't get me wrong, this isn't for a bend or anything, this is just for vibration, so I think it'll be fine. But what have we got there, you know? Let's measure. All up there adding 160 millimeters already. So I think we're gonna run out of space very, very, very fast. So what I need to do, as you can see how the bend's here and at a certain point, the bend stops. Then I need to come, say, 30 millimeters beyond that and do a cut. That is then the absolute shortest I can have this side. If that doesn't fit with this, that's everything at its minimum, we're gonna have to get radical. Yeah, this looks about right. Don't have any masking tape, but a bit of electrical tape should give us a reasonable line to cut along. Hopefully. I'm not going to put any sealant on yet because this is just going to be a bit of a test fit but this is essentially the shortest setup that we can make of course the other challenge is going to be getting it in and on these fittings yada 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 Can't move in two directions at once. So small side goes on here, large side flex, large side flex, small side onto, actually let's go, that's right, yeah, that'll give us access to the bolt heads once it's round. So the real question is, is this distance 280 millimeters, maybe? Maybe more, maybe less, there we go. Yeah, almost a foot. I'm gonna measure that just to see if it's even vaguely realistic. Yeah, not even close, we're about 10 centimeters too far. You know, that has the pipe coming up about here somewhere. You know, if we were 20 mil short or something, we could do that thing about cutting the flange back a little bit, but this is not even in the ballpark. So we're gonna to have to take that wrapped pipe off and fabricate something completely different to replace that, as far as I can see. I'm gonna try it without any flexible coupling. See, that's interesting, that's nothing, and it still sticks out at an angle. What I wonder though, is if I did cut this back, 
there's only a 30 mil overlap on the bands is a bit of RTV. I spoke to Gary, he said, yeah, use RTV on these joints, don't use many seal or anything. A uh, bit of RTV on here, bit of RTV on here, flat band there to there with our slip ring there. Is that actually enough flex to cope with the vibration of the engine on its mounts, which I've got to say is not much at all. It's imperceptible. So it's not a wild movement, it's just vibration. So obviously a weld might crack, but I'm not sure a band clamp across there isn't going to give us just enough give to not have problems. Optimistic? Who knows? Easy to do? Yes. But you can see absolutely no room for any flex in here. I mean, that's not even going straight up yet. I would need to shave at least 20 mil. I think the actual bands, I think, went 30 mil. And that's, you know, 30 mils about half that. This is the view from the top. You can see the angle it's kicked out at. By some absolute miracle <laughs> in the boat from when I bought it, I actually found a straight band clamp, which is, uh, you know, not a stepped one like this. I'm going to take a smidge off this pipe, a smidge off the other one, clamp it up with some silicon, with some RTV, and we're going to run with that for a little while, see what happens. If anything, it's a really good way to uh, boost comments in a video, get a thousand comments going, you can't do that. Uh, anywho. Loop. Don't know how straight I'm going to be able to cut this, but we may as well give ourselves the best guide we can. Once again, hopefully this will help with a little bit of flexibility in this joint. A little bit of wishful thinking, but we'll see. Certainly will help seal it. Alright, let's pop it up here. See how close we are to fitting. in now let's have a look from above mm, it's not too bad actually pointing pretty straight <sighs> i think we're home and hosed whether it's good enough i don't know i'm kind of disappointed it's not a full flex join but at the same time it's not a like a really hard welded join or anything so maybe we'll be okay this is the muffler really tall and thin you can see here and being a two-stroke diesel you can go straight through. I've just noticed this is a little bit dinged in here as well, which might be a problem, but what I want to do is cut this daggy end off here. It's got, uh, it's obviously been pushed in and has rivet heads and stuff. So rather than drilling them out, I think I'll cut it up. But having seen this, you know, I think I might actually cut higher. I'll move my tape because we'll get a better seal. Exhaust, we'll have an exhaust leak here if I don't cut that out. So I'll move my tape up to here and we'll cut it out. Standing the muffler up was a little bit tricky because it's just so tall and thin, but eventually, you know, just got it installed. They have a different type of clamp that's designed to go on those because they got the slits in them. So just got that in and then rattled it up a little bit. And, you know, it's pretty secure. So I don't think we'll have any issues there. They're pretty standard joins. After that, I had to start fabricating a little sequence of uh, hard pipe and flexible pipe. The flexible pipe's actually a bit of pipe that Damien from Brewpeg gave me when I was up there. Put a big swag of RTV on everything again. Most of it went in the joint, but uh, 
a lot of it went all over the pipe as well. So uh, got it in, thought I wasn't going to worry about it for now, just get it all together. And then once I got it clamped up, I could just start to clean it all up. It was certainly a mess doing it though. final step in the process was another one of the clamps, the same style clamps that go at the bottom of the muffler. So nice thing is you can take them apart easily, put them in afterwards, rattle that up as well and then uh, it was pretty much all together. section was a little bit tricky because I couldn't actually fit the rattle gun in there so I just had to get the ratchet out but you know no big deal. Well it's in. Took a bit of paint off with my uh, epoxy thinners but that's okay. I will probably give that another coat of paint. I'm actually tempted to wrap this. I'd like to do a shroud like Damien did on Brewpig but I think at least putting like a cover on it, either a proper fitted cover or some wrapping will stop it being that kind of instant burn if someone puts their hand on it by mistake. It's an issue. Uh, this is all a bit overcomplicated and this muffler out could actually take a bit of straight pipe. So I can get rid of all this complexity, this dodgy kind of double pipe nonsense, as soon as I find a way to either put a bend or a flap on the top of this we can actually make it much neater and go straight up. So I'll keep this on board and I'll have a think about that. But at least for now, that should be usable. Next thing I do is just put a little bolt in here so we can clamp around here and just support it a little bit better. I reckon that'll do, supported but not clamped down too tight. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this section of the pipe too now. Uh, what I might do is start at that end, just keep wrapping, and I might even come along. If we've got enough cloth to go over the whole tube here a second time, then that could be a good thing. So let's just do that. made it all the way to the end and because I presume this end is going to be the hottest being closest I'll just wrap back so we've got triple coating at this end then it sort of goes to double then eventually goes to single which I may double up later just gonna see if I can get this hose clamp around to hold the tape on yep that's good That hose clamp will stop it unraveling from that end. They're not quite big enough to go around this wider section, so I'm gonna have to get some like fencing wire or something for there. Anyway, in the meantime, let's put this bracket back up. All right, now let's see how we go with the clamp. I don't know, we're in luck, look at that. All right, spring washers. This is what we've got, clamped on, up and through. Okay, and then the top side, up, muffler, joins and our old exhaust tip. I'm thinking I'm definitely gonna replace all of this with just the straight four inch pipe like this. It'll go into here, into the muffler, straight up, put a flapper cap on top, should be fine. But I'll research the cap first, don't wanna go, uh, I don't want to go flooding the engine in the meantime, so I'll leave it as it is for now. Well, thanks for watching. Look, I'm pretty happy to have it in here. Obviously, it would have been great to have listened to it, but we don't have the engine running yet, so we can't, but we will soon. All we need to do now, before we can start the engine again and pretty much just go for our first run, is plumb that last little bit of the raw water system when those two fittings arrive in the mail, hopefully soon, 
and I've got to install this Vitus dual diesel fuel filter system. Once we've got those two jobs done, we're pretty much good to go. Parts are holding us up a little bit, but I figure it can't be too much longer now. I also remembered that uh, when I did the Jabsco pump, I said I was going to show how those pumps actually work. Um, it's not kind of as obvious as you might think compared to say just a regular paddle wheel for example. So I'll actually do that as a separate video over the next couple of days and upload that as well. Alright, take care and I'll catch you soon. See ya. Daffy's sitting on the balcony doing some bird watching. They're gone now, aren't they Daff? What did you see? You saw parrots, you saw Daisy, you saw Dotty. what else, can you remember? No. I know, it's crazy isn't it? I think Daffy gets these little issues because she can't scratch anymore, because she can't stand on one leg to scratch with the other. So she gets more of these little sores than the others, so we're just giving her mite medication and a bit of betadine. Oh, it's a hard life with one leg, isn't it?